Java is known as an object oriented programming language. And so what that means is the whole language is based on the idea or concept of being able to have objects which we can manipulate. And so an object is essentially something with a state or a behavior. And so we could take anything, for example, a dog, and as a state that could have a color or a name or a breed, and then its behavior could be barking, wagging its tail, or say, fetching a bone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a car object. And now the way we do that is we actually use a class. And so as you can see here, I've created a class called car object. And what that's going to be is essentially the blueprint for our object. And so what that means is we can put all its states, all its different behaviors that we want inside this class, and then we can instantiate it in another class, which we can then use however we see fit. So let's start off with our car object. I'm gonna make it really basic. And what I'm gonna do is start off by giving it some fields. And so that will be done by setting private. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set an int field, which will mark the age of our car. And then what I'll do is I'll make another one, a private string, which will be the color of our car. And then I'll do one more, which will be private boolean, and it will be is engine running. And as you can see, I've set all of these fields to private. And that's because as a developer, you want your code to be secure. And so setting these to private means that these fields are only visible inside of this class. And so that allows us to stop any third party or anybody essentially hacking our program and say setting the car's engine to uh, running when it shouldn't be. And if you think about this in a real perspective, so for example, Google's driverless cars, they don't want anyone randomly turning the engine on and off. And so now we've created the fields, we need to actually set the constructor, which is what's gonna actually make our object. So I'm gonna have public, and then the name of the object, or the name of the object type, which is going to be car object, so the same as the class. And then we need the parameters. So the car will have an age when we make it, a uh, color, and it will either have its engine running or not. And then we have all the code that's going to run when we instantiate the object in between a pair of curly braces. And so now here we have all the data that we set when we actually call or create the object, but here we have the name of the fields which actually represent the object. And so we need to connect what we set and the actual fields of our object. And the way we do this is by introducing a new keyword which we haven't seen before, and that's the this keyword. And so as you can see, we've actually got two data types, uh, age and age with the same name. And so what we do to refer to this age i.e. the age that belongs to the object, is use this dot age. And then we can set that to age, which will refer to the age which we actually select for the car. And then we can do the same thing for the color. So this dot color, which will take the color of the object and set it to the one that we choose when we instantiate the object. And this dot is engine running, which will do the exact same thing. And this will make a lot more sense when we actually see how we call an object. And so now we can actually add some of the behaviors for our class. But before we do that, we need to also be able to change some of our variables. So for example, say a year goes by and the age increases and we want to increase that. And so this is where we can introduce the getter and setter methods. And these are essentially functions which we can use to get or set the variables that we have here, i.e. the different data types of our class. And so I'm gonna make these public so that they can be changed. And then I'll have a public, say, uh, string, get color. And what that will do is, I won't need any parameters for that, but it'll simply just return the color of the car. So here we can see this is sort of lit up and that's because it's referring to color here. And then we can actually do the same to get the other data types. And this is really good because we can choose if we want people to be able to get or set them. So for example, being able to see what the color is is good, but we don't want people changing that. 
However, we may want people to change the age of the car. And so we can actually introduce another method called uh, public void, which will return nothing, and then set age. And so then that can take in a parameter, so int age. And then what it can do is we can get it to set the age, so this.age equals age. And that will be the age we pass in the parameter here. And so it won't return anything, but once we call it, it'll simply just change the age of our car. And we can also use that same logic for when applying the behaviors of our program. So in this case, say I wanted to do something based on the age. I may, for example, say when the engine's running, the car ages faster. And so what I could do is say, for example, public void um, fast age is what I'm going to call the method. And then it's going to simply say that if the engine is running, so if engine running is true, then we may want to say set the age to whatever the age is plus one. And remember, there's a slightly, I'm just going to space that out so it's a bit easier. But there's a slightly better way to do this, and that's by just simply incrementing with a plus plus. And so what this will do is it'll simply it'll simply say every time it's called, well, is the engine running? If so, set the age to whatever age is plus one. And so now what we're going to do is look at how we actually use this and how we would say call an object. And so the way we would go about doing that is actually when we get our object called in another class. And so here it can be created and instantiated. And so I'm going to create another class just so we could see that in action. So So if you remember, we go to our source file and then we can double click new Java class. And I'm just going to call this class, well, we can call it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it uh, car being used. And just because we're going to be using our car here. And so what I'll do is I'm going to create a main method. And so remember, there's a slightly quicker way we can do that is just by doing PSVM. Uh, and then IntelliJ, if we just hit enter, IntelliJ will fill that in for us. And remember, our car class was called, well, just car object. And so we simply just say car object, similarly to how we would say int something. And then I'm going to give this a name. So uh, it could be whatever it wants, but I want to give myself a Ferrari. So let's go with that. And then that's equal to. And then if you remember how we created an array in the last video, this is actually quite similar. So we don't just simply give it a value. We would actually just say new car object. And so this tells Java that we're creating a new object. And then we put in the parameters. So as you can see, it's actually sort of popping up there. Oh, and if we hover over it, we can see that it actually comes up. Right now, the reason it's coming up is because it's saying we're expecting this one, but we've actually just left some empty parameters. So the first one we had was an age. So I'm going to say four. And then we had its color. So that was a string. So I'm going to say red. And then we simply had is its engine running? And that was a boolean, so it'll be true or false, and I'm going to set that to false. And there we have our object created. And so we can use any of the methods we had before uh, on this object. So Ferrari.setAge, and we can change its age to, say, 6. Or we can say Ferrari.fastAge, or get the color. And so if you notice, going back to our other class, then you can see that it's only the methods we created that appear. So get color, set age, and fast age. And so these actually form the sort of library functions that we can use for our given object. And depending on where we set them, public or private, we'll make them available in our other car being used class. And that's the same for the constructor as well. So for example, if I decided to make this private, then what that would mean is if I went here, we would have an error coming up because it would say the constructor car object has private access. And so it's actually complaining because it's not allowed to access that class because we haven't given it permission. And so if I change it back again, we go, we see there's no more errors.
And so we may actually want to set our car object with some default values. And so that's where we would introduce another concept known as constructor overloading. And so what this actually allows us to do is create more than one constructor, so more than one thing that can create our objects, but with different parameters. So let's have a go and do that. And the way we would do that is simply by just writing out another constructor with the parameters that we want. So a little shortcut we can do is Command N or Control N, depending if you're using a Mac or not. And so in this case, we'll work off the scenario where say we're creating new cars in a factory. And so in that instance, we actually know that the age is always gonna be zero. And all we really need to set is the color of the car and whether or not the engine is running. And so we select both of those, hit OK. And as we can see, it's created for us below where the color is set to um, whatever the color in the parameter is. And this dot is engine running again is set, i.e. the object's actual value of whether the engine is running or not is set via this parameter value where its corresponding value is also highlighted here. And so then we can also choose to set our age. And notice because we don't have an age value here in this parameter, we could actually just write age because the constructor won't get confused as to which value we're referring to, like in the last scenario. However, we'll stick to convention and use this dot age, and we can set them to zero. And so now if we go to our other class and we can create another car object, and we'll just make this one a Porsche, and then we can set a new car object where we simply just set the color. So I'm gonna go for a blue. I'll stick with convention since we did capitals in the last one. And then we're gonna say the engine is not running, so false. And if I end that line, we can see it creates it with no errors being used. And what I'll actually do is I'll create a get method, which allows us to see what the age is of the car. And then we can actually see if this is zero. So we follow the exact same situation where we could write public uh, string get but or public int in this case and get however we're going to do a nice little shortcut where we do the same thing again so command n or control n and then this is a getter so we're going to hit enter with a getter and get the age and then if I hit enter we can see public int get age and then that will return the age and so if I go here I can actually print out the value for the age so I'm just going to do a system dot out dot print line and then I'll do Porsche and then use its library value and then use its library function of get age and then if I run this we should just get the age of the Porsche printed out and then because we set that to zero by default we should actually just get a zero printed out which we have here and so that's an overview of objects in Java, which are again another crucial concept and probably one of the most important things you'll come across when, you, when you're writing your Java code. And I'll attach everything that I've written in these two classes in the Git repository posted in the link in the description. So I hope you've found this content useful and please do like, share and subscribe.